welcome back. I'm Bill Van Dyke. This is The Faithful Word. We're going to continue on in our discussion of dispensationalism. If you listen to the first video about the, the overview of what dispensationalism is, great. Uh, you're that much farther ahead. What I want to do here is start with the first of the seven dispensations, which would be the Age of Innocence. Now, as I said in the introductory video, that dispensationalism essentially is a grand overview of Scripture. And it runs from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. The Age of Innocence is just a really short section and it runs from Genesis 1.26 to Genesis 3.24-ish. Okay? So, if you want to turn there with me, that's fine. If you don't, you just want to listen, that's fine too. Let's start. You have three primary uh, factors and three secondary factors. We talked about that in the introductory video too. So, what are the primaries? Well... There's always a ruling factor. What position is man in in this dispensation? Well, we're talking about Adam and Eve. So if you think about how they were created, they had a favorable disposition. Or in other words, they had fellowship with God. They were in fellowship with God. They were innocent, right? Sin had not entered into the world yet. Adam had not made that choice yet. So they had a favorable disposition towards God. The issue comes in is that it was unconfirmed. In other words, they had neither made a choice to obey or not to obey yet. So they were still in that unconfirmed, favorable disposition. So what happened? What was the revelation that God gave them? Well, it comes out of Genesis. We're going to look at uh, verse 28 and 29 of chapter 1, where it says, God blessed them, and he said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and the animals that moved upon the earth. And then verse 29 says, And behold, I have given you every herbs, seeding seed or plant, which is on the face of the all earth, every tree which is in the fruit of a tree, um, that shall be your food. So he kind of gives them some parameters um, as to how they were to live. Uh, if you were to go to Genesis 2, uh, verses 15, 16, and 17, you'll see a little bit more where it says, Jehovah God took the man, put him in the garden of Eden to work and, and keep it. So that was another one of his things, right? Remember we talked about the in Luke chapter 16, the rich man and the, the steward. So God would be the rich man and Adam and Eve would be the stewards. And so God has put him in the Garden of Eden, tend the ground, take care of the animals. Here is what you shall eat. Um, but then he says this in verse 16 of chapter 2. He says, uh, He commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree in the garden. And then verse 17, But you shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So there it is. There's the special revelation. God lays it all out for them. Um, you could even, if you want... Uh, at verse 24 of chapter 2, which talks about a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they should be one flesh. Because uh, he was told to uh, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Right? Have children. So man's responsibility, which is the third of the factors, is to obey God in this unconfirmed, favorable disposition of innocence. So that's what he's supposed to do. He's given his rules, given what to do. Don't do this. And so man now, Adam specifically, has to obey. 
So then you have your secondaries. What happens? Well, man fails, right? Satan enters into the garden, and this is chapter 3. He enters into the garden. He was more cunning than any of the beasts of the field. He comes to the woman, right, and tempts her to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She says, hey, we were told don't eat of it or touch it. So she made a mistake, right? She, God didn't say that. Um, but yet Satan goes, oh, but it's so, it looks so good and it'll make you wise and you'll be just like God. And she took and she ate and he gave to, she gave to Adam and he ate and sin entered the world. And so their dependence on God their reliance on God and their fellowship with God in that moment all changed for the worse, right? So they went from actually having a favorable disposition to an unfavorable disposition. Now they were out of fellowship with God. Where do we see that at? Well, we see that when God walks through the garden one day and Adam and Eve hide and he says, why did you do that? And they say, well, because we were naked. Well, how do you know that? Did you eat up of the tree I told you not to eat? Well, yes, they did. What was the judgment then? Because God came down with judgments, didn't he? Well, number one, he sends them out of the garden. Number two, for the man, you shall work and eat by the sweat of your brow. Thorns and thistles, in other words, Things are going to be hard now for you. You're going to have to work really hard. And it's not going to be easy. For the woman, pain and childbearing, child rearing, right? It's not going to be the innocent world that you had before this. Now it's going to be a sinful world. And of course, um, now death enters in. And it's not just physical death, even though that would be their end. Adam and Eve would die one day now, physically. They also died spiritually. And that was the moment they lost fellowship with God, that perfect fellowship. Their spirits died. They lost that. So it was spiritual death and it was physical death. And he also, if you remember, he cursed the serpent he said, from now on, you shall eat of the dust of the ground, right? So he cursed Eve, he cursed Adam, he cursed the serpent. There's the judgment. But remember, there's always a new beginning after the judgment. And it's in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. You know it. You should know it so well, where it basically says this, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Some versions will say crush. You shall crush his head and you will crush his heel. In other words, the seed of the serpent, he may crush the, the woman's seeds heal, but the seed of the woman is going to crush the serpent's head. That is a promise of a Messiah, a promise of a Redeemer, a promise of someone who's going to set it right. So right from the beginning, God gives the promise of a blessing, a sustained and permanent blessing. But as we know, reading the Bible, it's going to take a long time to get there. So that is basically an overview of the dispensation of innocence, the age of innocence. We're going to continue on and hit the next few uh, in our next videos. So just stick with us. You'll really enjoy it as we, as we move on and, and get deeper into uh, the scriptures. So thanks for listening. We're glad you're here and may God bless your day. Mm -hmm.